It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Thanks for joining us, my friends. Friends, I want to tell you a story. I'm watching TV. This is a true story in the afternoon, and the phone rings. Now, I answered the phone, and they said, um, well, you have a problem with your Amazon account. And I said, oh, geez, that's interesting. He says, now, just before we, you know, do that, he said, we're going to switch you to someone. I said, yeah, I do have a question. And I had a question about the Amazon account. So I was moved into another the person said, hold on. Then I went to another person. They said, okay, this is Sam LaSant. Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, we well, have a concern here. that Someone's trying to hack your Amazon account. I said, well, it's interesting because I wanted to ask you a question. Long and short of it is, here I am, King's College graduate, MBA degree, you know, I know what I could do with those degrees. Um, so I'm giving him information as to, you know, well, all right, we need this information, that information, to the point where I'm getting to where I had to take an app off my phone because I'm figuring this is a true legitimate call. Thank God I was able to detect something when they mentioned the cable system. And I said, well, let me talk to the, a particular person. And they said, well, they're, we're in Philadelphia right now. And I found out it was a scam. Now, that's the story that we're going to talk about today. That's a true story, my friends. If I would have let that go, I would have lost a lot of money. Okay, not that I have a lot of money, but I would have lost a lot of money. 92,371 people in the United States were victims of scams in 2021. Uh, total loss, $1.7 billion. Now, what, what are we going to do about this? We're going to try to educate you today. And thanks to the good people, Lehigh Valley Health and Work and the Pennsylvania State Police, Troop N, they're participating to provide you uh, information on scams. Uh, it would be really, really important for you to go to this event. Uh, and it's Tuesday, October the 18th, 6 p.m. Uh, at the Wilsey Center. Now, joining me today is Lisa Marie Halecki. Now, why don't you make a nice Italian name, okay? Uh, she's a community... Because I married a nice Slovak guy. <laughs> <laughs> she is the media and uh, community media engagement um, and engagement manager, right, yes. for Lehigh Valley Health Network. And, of course, our friend Anthony Petrosky, Troop N Public uh, Information Officer, always there to help us out. Um, true story. That's a true story. Now, that's, that's, now since then, I've gotten calls, uh, your Verizon count, you know, this count, that account, etc. cetera. And, and uh, so how did this whole thing, I think this is fabulous, okay, that what you're doing. Educate, 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 okay? How does this whole thing come about, Lisa? So uh, a few months ago, the FBI was having a seminar up at Wilkes University, and they invited many agencies that dealt with the elderly um, for fraud and, and protection and everything. And they had some really great speakers. Um, what I discovered was I knew some of it, but I didn't know everything that was going on. Then, at the same time, Trooper Petrosky, who I have worked in the past with on many um, projects, he also did one on distracted burglaries. And it kind of brought me back to back in the 70s when my great-grandmother actually had a distracted burglary happen in her house. And I'm thinking, how could this still happen all these years later? Like, how could people be that, if you will, gullible to fall for this? And, and, it, and it's no fault of our own other than these scam artists are just becoming more innovative in the way that they try to manipulate people and how they try to talk to people. So, um, you know, Trooper Petrosky and I spoke and I said, you know, it's not just the elderly that are, are having fraud, it's younger people as well. And then what do we do for the um, the children of those who are elderly that are getting scammed? I mean, you just read the numbers. They're not going down, they're going up. So for as much as we think we know, there's a lot more that we can tell them and we can um, let them know what's going on. So we got together, we partnered, and we decided to do something right here in Hazleton, and this is why it all came about. You were born and raised in this area? I was. Were you, Anthony? I was not. Okay, where are you from? I'm from the Wolfsburg area. Okay. This whole northeastern Pennsylvania area is a giving, compassionate area. Correct. Uh, these are people that are caring people. Uh, the hard workers, you know, that we, we've been known as the area with the, with the big heart. And I find that when, when a person who is decent, uh, who is a, a compassionate person, gets a phone call, particularly if it's a scam and you could tell us some of the scams that are, are happening, uh, they're compassionate. Okay, they don't think 
that there are bad people out there. And there, you know, have you found that, Anthony? Yes, it, it's unfortunate because senior citizens, although they're not the only ones that are being scammed, they're very trusting individuals. 20, 30 years ago, these scams weren't out there. It, it, you know, there was an email, so now if, if they get an email, they think it's legitimate. If they get a phone call from the quote unquote water company, they think it's legitimate, but that's not the case now. And, and they prey on these senior citizens and they'll take as much money from them as they can. So like Lisa said, we wanna educate not only them, but their friends, their family members. A lot of these senior citizens are by themselves. They're not making good decisions. They think it's somebody nice to talk to and they don't wanna hang the phone up, Sam. And we wanna educate them but we want to educate the entire community on scams because it's going on. And I'll tell you what, it, it's unbelievable, the scams that are going on and how many victims we actually have on a daily basis. You, uh, when you're giving your talks, you know, you have people that are there that can make it and um, you're hearing those stories. You're just going to mul multiply those stories by people who are, uh, who are not at those particular events. Um, in terms of, of education, um, it's, is there a rule of thumb? that we can just say, look, you know, it's like 911, all right? You know, you know there's an emergency, hit 911, and they hit 911. Is there anything that we could inform the public in saying, look, when you get this, do this, okay? Just so, is there anything? So the, the basic information I could tell everybody, and I want them to come to this so they can learn about all of the scams and really educate themselves, but if you don't know a phone number, don't answer it. Scammers, they don't leave messages. Legitimate people do. If you have somebody come to your, your house, you are not required, unless it's somebody dressed like me with a paper that says search warrant, you are not required to let them in the house. That's your house. If you're not sure if they're legitimate from that company, call the company. Just don't be so quick to let people in your house and give away your hard-earned money. All right, so sometimes people don't have phone identification. Okay, so they'll answer the phone. Okay, and now someone says, you know, they say, well, the, you know, you, you, your Verizon account or your this account or whatever. Right. What are some of the key scams that are going on right now? So before I get into that, I want to say the easiest way to get information from somebody is to simply ask. So a lot of these scammers will call and say, we would like you to verify. We want to make sure that you got your Medicare cards. That's a big one that's going on now. Did you get your new Medicare cards? We want you to verify your Social Security number. Well, you're not verifying anything. You're providing your social security number to these people who now have your identity. They could take that number, use it to, to their advantage. Um, beyond that, the loved one scam is, is a big one that's going on right now in our area specifically. How does that work? So how it works is somebody calls a house and they say, your grandson or granddaughter is in trouble. They're, they're in jail. They've gotten in some trouble and they need some help. We could let them go now. We just need a little bit of money from you. Don't tell your friends or your family. We understand this is embarrassing. It's a tough time. Give us an address place this amount of money in your mailbox and we'll come and get it and we'll release them. And they keep you on the phone. They're very engaging. They're talkers. They're very good at talking. They keep you on the phone. Again, they say, don't talk to anybody. He only gets this one call running out of time. They're putting pressure on you. And you know, when, when a grandparent hears the word grandson or granddaughter, that's it. They'll give whatever they can. And then they'll put money in the mailbox, and not tell anybody. And these scammers are actually sending couriers into the area to pick up this money. That's the biggest one we have going on. Besides that, the sweetheart swindle for anybody using a dating app. You know, you're talking to people that you never really met before. And the talks go good until all of a sudden it stops. And it's a couple of days and all of a sudden they write back, hey, I'm sorry, I'm going through a tough time. I lost my job, I'm gonna lose my apartment. And then you say, well, you know, we developed a good rapport. How about I help you out? And it starts with a couple dollars, turns into a couple hundred, turns into a couple thousand, and you never hear from the people again. And, and this is happening on a daily basis. Technology is great but these scammers are using technology to wipe people out of their savings. Wow, you, you know, it's, it's, when you hear that, you, you wonder sometimes, but the state of mind that that person must be in, you know, if they're dating someone, they could be lonely, they could go and be going through some kind of hard times or whatever, and, you know, here again, that compassion comes into that, Correct. into yes. the picture, okay. Um, Lehigh Valley Health Network, I, I have to tell you, I mentioned this on our health shows, um, Lisa, um, you and Tammy. Um, our, I, I, this is a, a health organization that has done so much for the uh, Northeastern Pennsylvania. And you guys not only talk about it, but you actually do it. 
And I want to applaud you for that because you really do. With our health shows, we've saved hundreds of lives from that. And here we're hoping, you, you know, you putting this together, it's going beyond, you know, the call of duty. And I think Lehigh Valley Health Nut, we should be congratulated. Pennsylvania State Police, you know, I wouldn't be a, I wouldn't be a policeman today if you gave me a million dollars, Anthony. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a tough ride. The interesting thing is um, in scams. Now, when you talk about distracted burglaries, Okay, and, I, and I'll get back to the phone scams in a minute. When you talk about distracted burglaries, what do you think a distracted bur burglary is, Lisa? Well, I think it's someone that will come to the door and they'll tell you that they're, say, from a utility company and they need to check something. Um, then you go and you let them in and you're distracted in one way. and then Especially if there's two people. Right, if there's two people. I mean, you know, like I said, back in the 70s, my great grandmother had that happen to her. You never even heard of that. But here, but here's the whole thing. And that's why I keep impressing like the people who are watching this now are thinking, ah, I would never that I, I wouldn't. Right. I'm smarter than that. We a lot of people are, but the numbers are saying we're not. So if it's not you, it could be a loved one. It could be a friend. It could be a neighbor. You know, let's get the word out. Let's come together as a community. Let's educate ourselves. Let's find out the best way to combat these, um, these situations from happening. And, um, you know, when you do the presentation on the 18th at the Wealth Sea Center, you're going to get deeper into all the different ways that they do these distracted burglaries. It's not just what I just described. There's so many other ways that they... There is. So, you know, that's, that's the importance of getting people together to, to listen to this. Interesting thing about that is uh, we live in a small community and, you know, uh, about a month and a half ago, there was a knock on my wife was home and they are putting new meters in, water meters in, in the, the valley. And so he said, I'm here to change your meter. Okay, what I forgot to do is tell my wife, well, three weeks before that, they were doing their changes. Anyway, she said, well, who are you, right? And he, he said, well, I'm, I'm going to check and verify it before, you know, and, and you're not coming in today until I verify it. So she called the, the water company, see, and he said, yes, we're doing this and doing that. Now, uh, I don't know if I would have done that. You know, I think women are more... <laughs> On, t on top of things, ah, what, what's going on, I, I go and do it, you know, et cetera. Uh, but here again, it's, it, these things happen innocently and boom, you know, uh, you're, you're, in, you're in, a, in a problem here. Well, I think it's also human nature not to be skeptical of someone. Exactly. Right. Be, yeah. and, and like you said, Northeast PA, we're kind, we're giving people. Yeah. We, we tend to, even if our ire goes up a little bit, we're like, eh, don't, they're okay. You know what I mean? Right. And I think that's how it actually evolves into getting <clears throat> scammed is there might be that little flag, but yet, so once again, Trooper Petrosky is going to teach people at this, at this event how to not, um, what would you say? Become uh, a victim. And, yeah. And, and yeah. you know, kind of recognize the warning signs because we're not saying anybody that comes to your door is a bad person and yell at them and scream at them to get off your lawn. No, no, no. No, that's not the case. But if they say they're from a company, instead of rather just letting them in, do your due diligence. Contact that company and, and, and let them know, I'm calling that company because if that's a scammer, He's they're on. gone. Yeah. And if it's legitimate, they're going to stay put but you have to follow through with it. And obviously I explain people like, if you ever feel threatened in any manner, you call 911, that's why we have a job. But we have to get this information out there. Everybody, whether they're 90 years old or 25 years old, we have neighbors, we have friends, we have family members, we gotta look out for each other. These scammers will take anything they can from people and that's what we are trying to do is stop that and have less victims because it is terrible when a victim comes through our doors at the barracks and reports that they're out five, 10, 15, $20,000 that they willingly gave or they let somebody in on the assumption they were there to do a service on their house. That's not right, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. Folks, I'm talking to uh, Lisa Marie, uh, who is a community media engagement manager for Lehigh Valley Health Network and Trooper uh, Anthony Petrosky, who is uh, the public information officer, always out to um, help the community. Um, when I come back, I want to talk about what about the causes? Do we know where these scams come from? You know, uh, you know, with all the monitoring, I know that the state police are on top of child pornography and they're uh, always monitoring different things that don't seem right. Do we have a place where these, these scams come from? And we'll talk a little bit more about gift card scams and additional things, but remember, 
A very important date, it's important for you, it's uh, October the 18th, 6 p.m. at the Wilsey Center. Um, they'll be there to discuss all the scams. Stay with us as we go after this. Welcome back to the Sam LaSancho, folks. Thank you very much, my friends, uh, for making the Sam LaSancho, again, the number one talk show in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Susquehanna Polling and Research just uh, gave us the final results. And um, we, we want to thank you very much for um, watching our programs. Uh, neighborhood programs, community news, very important, and I appreciate that very much. My guest today, we're talking about scams, my friends. Um, you've probably been a victim and you were smart enough to hang up or whatever. Uh, Elisa Marie Halecki is here. She's a community media engagement uh, manager for Lehigh Valley Health Network. Organization, my friends, who have contributed thousands upon thousands of dollars just to inform the community and of course our friends at the Pennsylvania State Police Troop and uh, Anthony Petrosky here, no stranger to uh, our programs. I want to ask you Anthony before I went, is there, you know, with all of the FBI and, and the, the Pennsylvania State Police and all of the uh, authorities, uh, is there an area where they know that these scams are developing from? Well, a lot of the scams, the phone scams, have developed from overseas in different countries. And, you know, just like that, you're going to have your copycats. So now people within our country are doing the same thing. But now, as I talked earlier about the loved one scam, that's happening in our area. There's couriers that are coming and picking up the money. So whether it's an out-of-state, out-of-country operation, and they're hiring people to come pick up the money, send it back to them, or if it's just in Pennsylvania, but this is happening in can't our you, area. Can't you set up a sting? Can't, in other words, if you have a person that says, look, I'm, I'm, I'm involved with this, and they want to come to pick up money, et cetera, and then set those set up where the, where, the, where the state police is there when they come and pick the money up? We can, but we need people to let us know when it's That's, happening. Yeah. Because what happens is, is we find out after they already gave money, yeah. and then it's tough to contact them and say, we want to give you more money, come back and meet us here. They know something's up. So by also doing this program and doing these community presentations, the information's out there. So if they recognize those signs, they can hang up, call us, let us yeah. know, and then if they call them back, they could set it up and yeah. let us know. Again, like we work together with the community. We can't be everywhere. We try to, but we need help from the community members that we serve. So if they know about this, they could contact us, and hopefully we could put an end to this. Well, that would be that would be the, the best thing to do. I Absolutely. Mean, especially if they have a courier running to that particular right. place. So if someone's a victim of that, just say, look, uh, let me get you back. I'm busy right now. Uh, call me in 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Call the state, please tell them what, what has happened. Right. And then you will, or whomever will tell them what to do in order to set it up. Correct. And that's why we do this. That's why, to get this information out there. Because not only can they not be a victim, but they can hopefully stop this. Because even though you get, you know, we all get these calls. I get those calls. We have a warrant for your arrest. I'm from the police association. And as soon as I tell them who they are, they hang up, obviously. But, you know, just because you're not a victim doesn't mean the person next to you isn't going to be. And so we can't just say, well, I would never fall for that and move on with our day. We need to help each other out. We need to educate as many people about these scams as possible because I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but they're not going to stop. Because if one scammer makes 100 calls in one day and they get one person to give money, their job is a success. It's a numbers game. It's exactly it right. Is. It's a numbers game. Um, and Lisa, just to, for people just turning into the, the show, uh, Lehigh Valley Health Network got involved. Why? With this particular presentation, Tuesday, October 18th, my friend, 6 p.m., Mark it down. So recently I was at a, a program at Wilkes University the FBI had put on for different agencies in the community. So um, as you well know, uh, Lehigh Valley Health Network Hazleton also has a vital choice program, which I manage. And we have over 300, um, over 60 um, participants. So of course I said, you know, I had worked with Trooper Petrosky and he has come to our Vital Choice program yes. and given um, presentations on these type of things and others. So we just thought it was a perfect match to partner together and get it out to the entire community. Not just the seniors, they're not the only ones being scammed and for our um, seniors children to be aware of what's going on so they can protect their loved ones and educate them too and let them know what's going on. You know, maybe a rule of thumb, uh, Anthony, would be if you get any phone call at all, any phone call that tells you either it's, you know, we're verifying this, will you verify that, will it's a Verizon account, an Amazon account, or whatever, my advice would be hang up. 
That's the easiest way to handle it. I, I wouldn't even go in it because if there's anything that's really serious, you're going to get a letter, a certified letter, or someone's going to come, you know, you're going to come to the house. Just hang up. Correct. Don't that's, even go into any kind of conversation. Am I that, correct in saying you that? You are 100% correct. The problem that lies in when we talk about senior citizens specifically is they're very trusting individuals. Yes. So if somebody calls them and says, you know, there's a problem with your account, in their minds they're thinking there is a problem thank you let's fix this and then they say I need to verify some information and again the easiest way to get information is to ask people so all they're doing is asking you for certain information address phone number date of birth social security number all sensitive information so that again that's why we do this we want this information out there and our whole goal is to educate the community when they come out about scams and after the presentation's over I stay around, I, ask, I answer questions, I communicate with people. It, it brings a community together while also giving them knowledge to not become a victim. Well, just hoping that when, you know, they can learn from that. Okay, my friends, here again, the simplest way is you get any phone call at all. Just very simple. Anyone says they're from any different account, etc. you know, whatever, you know, love, just hang up. Just hang up. Anything that's important, believe me, if they say, you know, the IRS has a question, whatever, hang up. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam LaSant Show, folks. Remember, 24-7, SSPTV.com. All of our shows are there. Our YouTube channel as well. 92,371 people in the United States were victims of scams in 2021. Total loss, $1.7 billion. And it's happening right here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Anthony Petrosky joins us from the troop end of the Pennsylvania State Police and also Lisa Marie Halecki, who is the Community Media Engagement Manager for the Lehigh Valley Health Network. They're always out there helping us. We have an event coming up Tuesday, October the 18th, 6 p.m. It's on your screen. Tuesday, October the 18th, 6 p.m. Make it, put it on your calendar. Go there because we're going to be talking about scams, okay? We're talking about distracted burglaries, phone scams internet social media scams, gift card scams, skimming devices used to obtain credit information. Anything else we're going to be talking about? I mean, this alone is four hours. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, a lot, that's a lot of information. And within each one of those sections, there's going to be a ton of information that we're going to go over. There's going to be a lot of pictures that I'll show people, videos. I'm going to show people how easy it is to look like a utility worker and how cheap it is to buy the stuff to look like a utility worker. It's all about bringing the education and sometimes just showing some pictures while you're talking about things makes people realize and put it all together. So you were talking about your first experience as a state trooper was what? My very first investigation as a trooper was a distraction burglary where a person who used to work for a painting company painted this woman's house. And he did at the time and then three years later he went back to the house and he said I work for this painting company we paint your house my boss sent me in to check out the ceilings and make sure there's no cracks. Well, he went in, he was looking, he started pointing around, then he said, can I use your restroom, and went upstairs. Uh, the, the elderly woman lived at home by herself, her son was at work. Uh, he was upstairs for a couple minutes, she yelled to him, he ran down, ran out the, the door, and uh, took all of her late husband's jewelry. Fortunately, he was arrested, but unfortunately, none of the jewelry was recovered. He told me he sold it on the street. Um, so, you know, that kind of started my passion for this stuff, which is why I enjoy doing these presentations and bring awareness because I've seen the victims of this crime. And it's, it's a very devastating thing for somebody to go through. Lisa, once again, uh, the involvement of Lehigh Valley Health Network was to inform the community of such scam. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, people think Lehigh Valley Health Network, it's all about health, but we, we embed ourselves in the community in all facets of, of caring for the community. And this is just another way of doing that is to protect them uh, and make sure they're they're well educated on what's going on every day. If they're, um, the, we're hoping that we can get as many people there as possible. And standard speaker, incidentally, will be uh, joining, uh, promoting this as well. And we want to thank John Patton, everyone at the standard speaker, and of course, hear us here. Uh, we're here at SSP TV, Samson Productions, doing whatever we can. I'm sure Lisa Sugar will be talking to you a couple days before that and interviewing yes. as well. Definitely. Yeah, de um, definitely thank you for your sponsorship, both uh, of you. We're like the Lehigh Valley Health Network. We try to do everything, and, and <laughs> it's so true. You know, I can't, I can't stop bragging about how great uh, the Lehigh Valley Health Network is. It's, uh, particularly when I've seen the results from our, our shows that we're doing with the doctors and the lives that we've saved. I'm hoping, Anthony, that you get a good crowd. 
I'm hoping I, I'm hoping that you know we could at least curb this. Are there any area, predominant areas here before uh, before we end where there are there are heavy concentration scams where you know there's a lot of scams that are happening? Is there any or is it just you know unfortunately Sam it's everywhere because it, it, this doesn't have to necessarily be an in person thing. The, the distraction burglaries are, but phone scams, email scams, they can happen anywhere to anybody at any time. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that the, the event is going to save a lot of aggravation and money, and I'm hoping this show uh, helps you to understand. You get a phone call, my friends, very simple, very simple. I know it's not in your nature sometimes. As soon as they start asking questions about our disc account, that account, you know, Medicare, hang up. Just hang up, and you'll save yourself a lot of aggravation. All right, I'm going to close by telling you October the 18th, 6 p.m. at the Wilsey Center. Uh, be there if you could. We'll see you next time.